majority of young people will check their social media five or more times during the day and during the week they will spend on average more than 20 hours a week on social media. So really the question becomes how do we capitalise on this and make use of the positive elements of this but also how do we become aware of the negative elements and take these seriously in our clinical practice. So one of the ways that we went about understanding this issue more is doing a workshop with young people who are our partners in developing coordinated responses. A lot of us have really nuanced relationships with social media. It can be a blanket in which to hide under or you know, a, a way that, that you can foster your own personal development. And so I think for the clinicians, a large part of their role uh, would be around encouraging the young person that they're working with to uh, t you know, be able to take an active role in what they're doing and have some purpose around which type of social media user they want to be um, and what they want to get out of it. It's really easy when you're using social media to fall into a trap of comparing yourself to what you see and then use that as like a means to like value yourself I guess or yeah, like it, it does kind of lower your self-esteem to see that stuff sometimes. So when I do find that it's impacting my mental health negatively and I am doing that social comparing, um, I think what's best for me is to just take a break from it, get more in touch with the real world, as they say. Go outside and go for a walk or go and see a friend or something and it kind of, doing that makes me realise that there's more than just what you see on social media. A couple of the key messages that we've gotten from young people for clinicians is number one, not to presume that all social media use is negative, that they're actually getting a lot of benefit out of social media use in a lot of ways in terms of their relationships, their interests and their expression. And also not to see social media use as kind of separate from the rest of their lives. That social media use isn't simply a kind of side issue, but it's really an integral part of their social life and their expression as a person. I think that the trap about social media can be not recognising when it's starting to negatively impact you and that can be really hard to pick up on. Making sure that social media doesn't impact my mental health and my, and my life in a negative way is about being really conscious and active in what I'm doing on social media and if that's contributing to the sort of life that I'm wanting to lead uh, is what I'm posting reflective of what I would actually like it to be reflective of or is am I trying to say something else through my posts? Is what I'm seeing worth seeing for me? Is it contributing to my life in a positive way? The approach that we want is to help clinicians to understand how do you work with young people about this issue and not ignore it when it's such a huge part of their lives. In our resources we've kind of gone into a little bit more detail about how you might respond productively with the young person and how you might raise these issues in a way that balances the pros and the cons of social media use. Don't be scared of social media. The reality is that there, there is really positive ways to use it and being scared of it's not really it's not really sustainable to suggest to not use it or something like that. So for me it's about being active in what you're doing online and not being a passenger in your own social media use.